Hello, my name is Paul Slins. My parents attended Idwell Pines Camp way back in the 1940s as teenagers. But our family didn't actually become involved in the ministry of the camp until 1961 when my father began work at Idwell Pines Camp as the full-time ground superintendent. Our family lived and worked at the camp for about three years, then left for a while, but in the mid-1960s, the camp board contacted my dad and asked if he would consider returning to full-time employment at the camp as camp manager. We were at the camp for quite a few years. My father retired from the camp in the late 1990s, and the camp board asked if I would assume the position of executive director at that time. I then retired around 2010. During the two years that our family was away from Idaho Pines back in the mid-60s, there was quite a surge in the interest in home movies. Kodak dominated the industry at that time, while Technicolor dominated the commercial industry. Technicolor made a major push to break into the home movie industry. As part of that promotional effort, Technicolor held a drawing at the Los Angeles County Fair, which my father won. The grand prize was a home movie camera, a projector, film, and processing for life. Not only my father's life, but the lives of his children and his grandchildren. That sounds kind of like an amazing deal, but the reality was that after a few years, Technicolor abandoned their efforts in the area of home movies and the supply of film and processing ended. I share all of that as a lead in to tell you that when our family returned to Idaho Pines in the mid 1960s, my dad was really into home movies. After all, film and processing were free. So my father shot quite a bit of footage, a lot of that at Idaho Pines camp. And we'd like to share that, some of that with you right now. My best guess is that most of this footage was shot during the summers of 1965 or 1966. This was before the ability to record sound was available in home movies. These scenes were probably filmed during the annual Los Angeles District Nazarene Camp. The Nazarenes were one of the early don denominations involved in the camp. At one point, Nazarene denomination occupied about eight weeks of the summer calendar with three districts holding their camping sessions at Idaho Pines. They would usually have a special banquet time the last night at camp, and I believe these are to be shots of that. Meals were served family style with one person from each table coming up to the serving counter and getting one of each bowl or platter and then returning the bowl or platter if seconds were desired. Worship in McNeil Hall would usually follow dinner. McNeil Hall was built in the 1950s. Prior to that, Emerson Hall was the main meeting hall which was one room, one floor back then. Music has always been an integral part of worship, and many of the groups would form choirs and hold rehearsals during free time, and then singing during the worship services. Camp creates opportunities for a lot of fun memories and growth experiences. Probably hundreds of thousands of people's lives have been impacted by the Wall Pines Camp over the last century. Often there would be social times after the service with watermelon or homemade ice cream, sometimes cookies and hot chocolate, all served by the camp staff. All of this is part of uh, the camping experience, interspersing fun and fellowship with worship and spiritual growth. Here we see some of the group's leadership getting a break as well. Often the day would end with time around the campfire in the main amphitheater. Campfire services can be a huge part of the camp experience. Often 500 or more would squeeze into the main amphitheater to enjoy a large bonfire. In those days, we had actual wood-burning fires. The main amphitheater is an important part of the camp. The original structure was built around 1928, then added on to a couple of times over the ensuing years. If you look closely, you can see the different sections over the different years. Most groups arrive by bus. Often dozen of, dozens of buses pull into the main gate where everyone would unload and receive their cabin assignments. Campers would often just drag their suitcases through the dirt. This was before wheels were added to suitcases. Maybe it's time for four-wheel drive suitcases next. Many campers enjoy watching the pl plentiful gray squirrels. Here you can see some of the original cabins in the background. The majority of the housing available were in these little green cabins in those days, usually six campers to a cabin. We always try to make use of the great outdoors at camp. 
Even having classes and other meetings outdoors in the shade whenever possible, always trying to take advantage of every opportunity to enjoy God's creation. Groups would use the main amphitheater when the sun allowed. You get meetings and meals while enjoying outdoor walks in the mountain air. Here you can see the old camp maintenance building background. It's since been remodeled. You can see that most of the camp vehicles were parked in front of the shop where much of the maintenance work took place. Athletics have always been an important part of camp. Here's the softball field below Emerson Hall adjacent to the main amphitheater. We used to play a game we called blooper ball. Blooper ball was basically softball, but played with a very soft ball about six inches in diameter. It was extremely difficult to hit any distance at all, but you could catch a low pitch on the outside. You could hit it up in a long arc and get surprisingly more distance and get more bases run. The incredibly soft ball meant you weren't required to wear a ball glove. Volleyball is another long time camp activity, one which is still enjoyed, but with a lot more variety and styles. The main interest has been a local landmark since its construction. Here's the early swimming pool, originally constructed in 1928, a great place to show off or sometimes just get embarrassed. The original pool has had some major renovations several times over the years. Sometimes tragedy has stricken. These are shots of a residence which once was located on the northeast corner of the camp property. While a new employee was off picking up his family to join him living and working at the camp, the house burned to the ground. The trees were scorched in the process. Here you can see more of the original cabins in front of what are now cabins numbered in the 30s and 40s. The flagpoles at the time and the old water storage tank for the camp water supply, which has since been replaced with a much larger tank. More shots of the old cabins more evidence that they comprised the majority of the housing in those days. These are the second version of cabins. This row was from the main office building down to the restroom facility. You can see that the area now occupied by Patterson patio has changed some, but the original water fountain remains, as does the original nurse's facility. Here's another shot of the shop. You can hardly recognize it from this shot. It actually remains as a part of the existing structure though. This is the meadow below Emerson Hall, looking much the same as it does today. This was the main bridge at the time. It's set approximately where the covered bridge sits now. It's interesting how much of the path of the creek changes over the years as a result of larger storms. It's changed many times. These are the shots of the meadow camp. You can see that there are a lot more buildings now. This was before the block dorms were constructed, but you can see buildings 21, which is Ketchum Hall, cabin 20, and you can see that there have been many changes in this section of the camp. Here's a shot of the chapel, and you notice that this was before the bell tower was added. Here are cabins one through four and cabin seven. You can see five and six as well, but one through four and seven were relocated to the camp from uptown to provide additional housing. In the distance, you can see what's now Scott Lodge next to the A-frame. That was housing for the camp director at the time and has since been remodeled into Twin Peaks. Right across the highway is the elementary school. It was easier to see at the time since none of the block dorms were in place yet. They were added in the early 1970s. We hope you enjoyed seeing this view of the camp back in the 1960s and that it gives you a better appreciation for the history and the rich heritage of the ministry that is Ida Wild Pines Camp.